Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply. Let's make a very clean, simple, yet highly useful project. How many folks do we know that landscape professionally or folks that just work in the yard on the weekends? Or how about somebody that works in a shop that needs a tool that's protected yet easy to get to? I happen to be one of those. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there, gonna take you straight to the website. Also, if you wanna know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, get started. This is a relatively simple pattern, so let's have fun with it. Make a beautiful project. Now we've got a digital pick. We'll jump over to that shortly. But let's start here because we need to be able to make our pattern from scratch because there are so many variations on tool. Let's make our pouch fit our tool exactly. So I've got a piece of copy paper here. Not great pattern material, but we're going to work with this. I've got a center line. And let's go with a heavy duty pair of cutters. It's a good tool to have in our shop. If you've ever dealt with the copper rivets, that is the perfect tool for clipping those off. That is a solid piece of equipment. So let's start right here. I'm going to do my best to center this on our center line. Okay, we've got it. Let's trace this in. We've got that. Okay, right here, I've got a piece of tape. That's going to be the top of our pocket or our throat. And I've just dropped that in roughly where the tool handle starts to curve back in. So let's make a mark there. Now, let's take our square and I'm going to center or I'm going to square to my center line so I make sure our pocket throat is squared. Good. Well, there we are. That's easy enough. Okay. Now, to make our main body, our backing piece, I'm going to come out about three-eighths of an inch. That gives us enough room for a bend and a stitch line. Three-eighths of an inch, or about, about nine and a half millimeters. So let's make two marks here. Three-eighths there. And let's come down about right here and go three-eighths. You'll see where this is going to work for us. Okay. Let's lay our tool back in. And let's just scoot that over to our marks. Starting right here. Let's trace this in right up to our throat. So we've got that. Now on this end, let's come out about a half of an inch, maybe just a little bit more than three eighths, and let's just do our best to mimic the shape of the tool. There we go. Now we're working in halves here because we're going to fold this over and then trim. So it's going to be perfectly symmetrical. If we're not perfect anywhere along this line, it's not going to matter. It's going to be the same on both sides. So it's going to look like it was designed that way. Okay, up here. Let's continue up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my square because I want this to be parallel to our center line. And I can see that it is because I'm using the one inch arm. So let's come up to the top of our paper. Easy enough. Now, we can trim the backing anywhere we want. If we want the handle sticking up above the pouch, we can do it. But what I'm going to do is come up just a little bit past the handles. So let's go about three inches, give or take about 7.62 centimeters. Let's draw that across. Well, there's the top of our backing. Now, and I'm so I'm notorious about this. Let's scribe our center line, but let's don't scribe this hard enough to where we actually cut through the paper. I've done that so many times. Just scribe that lightly. Good. Now let's just fold that over on our center line. How easy is that? So let's cut this out. And we've got it. So easy enough. We've got a good looking pattern, easy to create. Now, our pocket. Let's take a second piece of paper. This, by chance, does not have to be perfect by any means. But let's come up, let's give ourselves at least an inch between the bottom of the paper. You'll see why here shortly. So now let's trace this in, but let's just come up to our line. Good. Okay. Now let's draw this line because on this part, this is the only thing that needs to be clean. So let's draw a line across there. That's our throat. Now I want to come out about an inch, give or take, about 2.54 centimeters because we're, we're going to need to make a bend, a curve, and then our stitch line. So just freehand, that's all we need. 
Let's come out about an inch. That's going to give us room to work on our wet forming. Good. There's the piece we're going to cut for our pocket. Let's cut this out. And there we are. Does not need to be perfect by any means. Okay. So we've got both of our pattern pieces. Now we're going to go simply with oblongs. There we go. We're going to go with oblongs here simply for belt loops. We can always go with our clip and we sell these and I love them. In fact, right here, great example. This pouch is about 10 years old. That clip is still solid. That's not going to give out on us. But again, let's just go with some simple oblongs for a belt. So let's jump over to our digital pick. All I've done here is I'm going to go with a one and three quarter inch oblong. And if you don't have one, it's no problem. We'll talk about that. But I'm going to come down about three quarters of an inch, about 1.9 centimeters. And I'm going to come in from my edge about three quarters of an inch. Well, for the most part, there's our pattern. Okay. Well, let's step over to our main table, cut some leather. I've transferred our pattern over to some poster board. It's a little easier to trace from this than say the copy paper. We're probably only going to make one of these. Well, if we're going to make more, yay. But if we are, let's transfer our pattern over to our pattern sheeting. It's easy to cut, easy to mark, very durable. That makes a great pattern. So let's start right here with our main body. I'm going to go with an eight to nine ounce natural veg. This piece is cut out of one of our single shoulders and I love our single shoulders. Very affordable, good quality leather, and we've got it in a number of weights. In fact, both pieces come out of our single shoulder. Now I'm going to go with a pen. Hate to go this route, but first off, we want to make sure we clean our pen off, right? But if we actually cut inside the ink line, we've got a more accurate pattern, but also any ink we have below this, we'll never see it. Above this, we're going to edge that. So we're going to knock that right out. So let's trace this in. Good. We've got that. Now with our square, let's start again. New blade every time. But let's trim this out. There we go. We've got our body. Okay, next step. Let's go with our corner knife. We've got six sizes in this. We're going to go with the 12 millimeter or about half of an inch. Let's just clip our corners. Notice this is not a dry punch. Yeah, how easy is that? How very clean and professional is that corner? Nice. Okay, next step. Let's take a groover. Let's groove all the way around. Now my groover, I've got this set at one eighth of an inch. Good. Now we're not going to sew up here, but that, that adds actually a relatively nice edge decoration. Makes our edge look more complete. So now we're going to edge on the front, but we're only going to edge above the pocket because when we have these two pieces come together, I want them to meet and I don't want two rounded edges coming together. So let's take our all. There we go. Let's mark right there and right here. And now we're going with an eight to nine ounce. So we're going to go with a number two master tool edger, but let's edge up around and back to that mark. And there we go. And let's come off right there. Good. Now let's flip this around edge all the way around. There we go. Now if that's a little confusing, that'll make sense when we drop our pocket on and then edge both sides and select that edge. Okay, so now let's take this mark with our pattern, our oblong holes. And I'm going to mark those on each end. That's going to help me keep those straight. Very nice. Okay, that's ready to punch. Let's set it aside. Now let's jump over to our pocket. Now on this, doesn't matter here how bad our pin is because we're going to trim most of this off. But right across the top, that's the one place we need a very accurate line. Good. Okay. Again on the throat, let's cut this with a square, but we'll cut the balance freehand. And the one place where I very accurately split the ink line doesn't matter. Okay. 
Now a step that I always forget before I wet form. Let's groove and edge our throat. So let's go across with our groover once, twice, maybe three times. Okay, there we go. Now let's come back with our number one edger. I'm going to edge the front and the back. There we go. That is going to look good. We're going to reset here, wet form our pocket. When we wet form, we need two things. We need some water and our thumbs. Now I'm going to soak this in our water, but not long. It's a four to five ounce. That water's going to wick through it. But the longer I soak it, that just means the longer I'm going to have to wait for this to get to a point where we can wet form. So all told, I'm probably just going to go a couple of seconds at most. And there we are. Okay, so let's lay that down. Let's give that about 15 minutes. Let that water wick thoroughly through. We've got some good dry time. What I'm looking for is I want that water wicked through and through, but I don't want it dripping wet. So let's take our pliers, basically our form. Now I'm going to drop this right on our tape. Now we're going to trim this to size. So if it's a little left or a little right, it doesn't really matter. But nonetheless, I'd still like to get that as centered as I can. And I want that line right at the bottom of my tape. So let's start to work this down simply with our fingers. Let's come around the bottom. Now we're going to work this several times as it dries. But look at that, we're already getting a very good form just with one pass. So let's work this for another minute or two. That looks good. We're even getting some of the detail from our tool in that. What I'd like, it's on here, right here on our sample. Notice how that clicks down in there. I can even shake that up and down hard and the tool is not coming out. That's a good form. That's what we're looking for. But two things we need to watch for. First off, our throat. It's easy to not pay attention to this part and it starts to work left or right. We're uneven. But secondly, fingernail marks. These can absolutely make a big mark in our leather. But that just looks great. So let's do this. We're going to work this about every 10, 15 minutes over the next hour as it dries. While we're doing that, Let's jump over to our punch table, drop in our oblong punches. We're going to have a belt strap moving through our oblongs, typical belt width, one and a half inches. So I want to bump that up. I want to go with a one and three quarter inch. Now that's a little bit of an obscure size. If we don't have that, even with a one inch, we can step this out and we can make an oblong just about any length we want. So we've got our marks here. Let's drop in our oblong, center this on our marks, and let's just do our best to make sure this is parallel with the edge of our leather. That looks good. Okay, let's jump back over to our main table check on our wet form piece one more time. Well, this is looking good and it already feels like it's starting to dry. Got a nice form on that. Now, I'm gonna work this again over the next hour, every 10, 15 minutes, a couple of times. But then after that, I'd like to leave this on the tool to let it dry. Well, I don't want the tool to rust. So let's just take some cellophane, make sure that tool's dry. Typically by this point it is, but let's just lay some cellophane right there. And now we can drop that back on not going to worry about the tool. Okay, so let's give that about 10, 12 hours to dry, and I'll work it a little bit in between. Ample time to dry. That looks good. Very nice form. All we used are fingers and some water. Now, we're not going to dye this project. We're going to leave it natural, but I would like to add a top coat. Give it a little gloss. Give it a little protection. We could certainly do that when we're assembled, but we won't be able to get our top coat down in the pocket. Well, that's not really that big of a deal, but since we're going to add top coat, let's go now. So, always over to our leather ball, my favorite, absolutely, and we're going to use two rags. So, I'm going to apply. I call this my wet rag. Then we're going to buff with a dry cotton rag. So, let's go sparingly. Just work our way across. 
We've got our top coat there. Let's give that a second to dry. Jump over to our pocket. Now we want to go slowly, like I said, sparingly, because we don't want streaks on this. The one thing we really don't want is, say, bubbles. That's going to show up. So let's go easy. Let's jump back over here. Now let's just buff. Well, there we go. That looks good. We've got a nice gloss to that. Do the same thing here. And there we go. Okay, we've got top coat on both pieces. Let's reset here. Glue our pocket on. There are a number of ways we can do this, but to me, the easiest way to do it, let's simply mark the inside. We're going to glue this on, flip it over, and trim to size. Makes the whole thing very easy. We're not trying to work this around to fit our main body. We're actually using the body as our template. So let's start right here. I'm going to take a wing divider. We can do this by hand, absolutely. But I'm going to set this at about half of an inch because we're just mainly making a guideline here. So I'm going to butt that right down in the bottom. There we go. And let's use our wing divider and run that around. I can see that not very well, but we're going to take care of that. So let's work this around. Most likely the camera's not going to pick that up, but I can actually see that line. Now, here's the problem. When we add glue to this, that's going to disappear completely. So let's go with a pen and let's mark this line. It's simply a guideline. We're going to trim this off. There we go. I can certainly see that. Now, over here, we're going to add glue. Well, first off, we've got a top grain, but we've also got a top coat on the top grain. Where I'm going with this is let's rough this so that glue is going to stick well. We've got our marks right where the throat of our pocket is, so let's rough this downward. Now, I don't want to rough off the edge of the leather because that's going to make it fuzzy, but let's just keep that right there on the edge. Let's just break up that top grain and that top coat so our glue will sit nicely. That looks good. That's going to take our glue nicely. So let's go with our S18. This is a contact cement, so we're going to need cement on both pieces. So right here, let's just come in about a quarter of an inch at the most. Try to start a little bit a little bit below our mark. Well, that looks good. Okay. Now we could go with a number of different glues, but I want this to stick because we need to chisel this over on our pocket. Let's do the same thing, but let's make sure we go over our line. We've got good glue on this, so let's give this about five minutes. Let that glue set. Our glue has set, so let's do this. Let's take our body, and I'm going to press the point right to the bottom of my mark, and I'm going to work this in because that's going to stick out just a little bit, but let's work that in and press that right up to that ink line and press down on that so our glue sets. That glue is set. Nice. Okay, next step, let's take a brand new blade. Since we've got a pocket on this, what I'm going to do is come right up to the edge of my cutting surface and let's simply use the body as our straight edge. Well, there we go. Actually, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So easy to line up. Now, if we need to, we can always take a little sandpaper if we've got a little rough spot. We can always sand a little bit. In fact, if we sand, that's going to give us a nice edge. Well, all told, that looks good. Let's reset at our groove and our edger. Here's a good trick for our groover. Now, typically, the guide arm comes out about that far. I tend to trim this down because when I'm grooving, I don't want that hitting my finger. It's going to give me a bad groove. But right here, if we're doing something like a pocket, notice I've trimmed this all the way down. Now, the boss wants me to say, if we trim the guide arm, that negates the warranty on that. But all told, those are pretty inexpensive. But also, I'm going to set my groove line at one-eighth of an inch in. To me, that's a good distance in for a stitch line. Not too far in, not too far out. So let's just groove our pocket.
Well, easy enough there, so we know exactly where to lay in our chisel line. Now let's jump back over to a number one edger. Since we've got a lighter weight up here, and let's add edge down and back. Well, all told, that looks good already. When we add a stitch line in, this is going to be beautiful, which that's our next step. Let's jump over to our punch table, drop in our chisel line, because we're almost done here. We're going to go with an eighth inch flat chisel. This is my favorite chisel. Well, first off, looks just like a machine stitch, but secondly, it's a little more room to get two needles through so we don't tire out our hands when we're sewing. Now we're going to go through a four to five and an eight to nine ounce. That's some thickness. What I'm getting at is let's go with fewer tines. I'll explain that. So right here, when we go through the leather, not an issue. We've got a mallet. The trick is coming back out of the leather. I don't want to ream open my stitch holes or stretch out my leather. So if we go with fewer tines, like say a four over a six, that's simply less metal we're trying to get out. Now we could start right at our throat and stitch or chisel all the way around. The problem is, is we're not guaranteeing that we're going to get a chisel hole right in the point. So let's start with a single chisel. Now I'm going to lay this in horizontal to my project. So let's drop that right on the point, right in our groove line. There we go. Now one more. Good. I can feel chisel on the back side. So let's work that out. Good. Easy enough. Now another thing that I find difficult is trying to get our stitches consistent when we go around a corner or a point. So let's take our, take our two tine and I'm just going to mark where my next chisel hole needs to be on both sides. So if we start at the bottom, chisel up, that means we're going to be even on both sides. So now I would like to go with a single tine again. There we go. And as we progress, we'll get a feel for how much pressure we need, we need on the chisel. Same thing on the other side. There we go. I'm just trying to see if I can feel that tine pull through. Okay, we're on our way. Now we could certainly go up to a four, but we've got some curve. And again, we're trying to pull this out. So let's jump over to a two. Now, one at a time, that can be a little tedious, but what we can do, let's just hammer that. I know exactly where that next tine is. So let's drop that in. Yeah, I'm starting to get a feel for how hard I need to hit that. Now, working this out so we don't ream out our holes or stretch our leather, let's just easily work that back out. There we go. So I'm going to work my way down to the top of our throat. Now, when we get to our throat, let's take one more chisel, go past our throat so we can secure that down. In fact, I'm just going to use my one tine there. There we go. Okay. Well, that looks very clean and consistent already. Looks good. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And one more. Well, that looks good already. Very nice. Let's jump over to our pattern table, drop in our stitch line. We're going to do a basic saddler stitch. It's a great stitch, easy to do, but very strong. Now we've got a good video on hand sewing, so I'm not going to go into all the details, but just the high points. Well, first off, good general hand sewing needle. This is the John James number 18. It's my favorite size. On our thread, we're going to go with the Ritza 0.8 millimeter. Again, that's the one size I use most often, but we've got a utility project here. I want a thicker thread. Now, we're going to do the saddler stitch. So I would say let's go four times our length. Well, that sounds long, but actually, we're going further across than down. So we're going to chew up some distance, but we're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to do a double knot right here at the throat on both sides. So let's start here. Let's come down to our second hole or the first hole on our on our pocket. Let's even out our distance. Okay. Now let's come back to our first hole. Good. Let's tighten that down. 
Now that's going to pull that thread in the second hole towards us. So therefore that hole is wide open and I'm not going to split a thread. Good. Okay, now let's start with our basic saddler stitch. Needle from both sides. Let's come halfway through, make an X, move our fingers from the eye to the tip. And there we go. We could actually move pretty fast when we're hand sewing. So I'm going to continue all the way around. As we get down to our last two holes, or the last hole on our, on our pocket, let's go through, but let's don't tighten our thread down just yet. Let's leave it about right there. Now let's come down to the last hole, and let's back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this needle, and I'm just going to go through the top ply. And the same with the back. Okay, we've got that. Now let's tighten these down one at a time. Well, that looks good. Let's step over to our main table, tie a knot, cut that. We are almost done. Let's tie a square knot. So I'm going to take my right, going to circle around my left, and I'm going to draw that down in there. In fact, I can use my finger or my thumb. In fact, I'll flip it around this way because I want to get that down in there. So let's pull that tight. Okay, we did right over left. Now let's go left over right, circle around. Let's do the same thing. That's a good knot. Now to clip this, what I want to do is I want to pull these taut and I'm going to lay my knife down. I'm not going to touch my leather. But what I'm going to do, let's pull these taut, and I'm going to try to keep my hand out of the way. Let's pull those, lay my knife close to my leather, but then let's pull that thread across the blade. So therefore, we're not cutting into leather. That looks good. Let's reset for one more step. Let's slick our edges. Last step, but this is a nice touch. So when we slick, what's going to happen is our edge is going to get rounded. It's going to get glossy. It's going to look good, feel good, but also a little extra durability. Now we used our main body as our cutting edge. We could always sand if we need to, but I would advise against too much sanding. But we can always use that to even things out. Also, an added benefit to slicking, if we hand cut our corners and they're not perfect, this is going to help. So let's go over to some of our leather balm, just with a good cotton rag. We're going to apply this, again, somewhat sparingly, and only to our edge. Good, we've got that. Now on our slicker, we've got a 4 to 5 and an 8 to 9. That's going to be too thick for this groove. But what we can use is the shank, because we've got a rounded inside corner there. But let's start right up here at the top. The top groove here, now we can let this hang off of our table to give it a little stability, but let's just work this end. Very nice. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but that's now rounded, slick, looks good, feels good. So now we jump down to our 4 to 5 and an 8 to 9. Well, we could use this shank, but notice that's a little wide. We might leave a mark on our leather, so let's flip this over. What I'm going to do is burnish from this side. Then I'm going to flip over and burnish from this side, trying to round that corner. Now, big point here, pressure, not the point, more heat and friction. I don't want to press so hard that I develop a lip along here. We could edge that back off, but now we're working backwards. So let's work these edges for just a minute. Well, that looks good, feels good, nice edge. Now the big test. Does it fit? Look at that. Almost perfect. We're a little short, but as we use this and as it softens up, I bet that's going to be spot on perfect. But boy, talk about fit. That is nice. Just what we're looking for. Our tool sheath is like so many leather craft projects. Well, it's great right where it is. Looks good. Very useful. But we could add dye or antique. We could slick our edges, add a bell loop, a clip, we could lace, add paint, so many possibilities. And that to me is one of the best parts of Leathercraft. 
but I hope your sheath looks good and fits like a glove. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.